So, as many of us know, Battlefield 2042 can be very intensive to try and run in any sort of optimized fashion on PC. With today's video, I'm going to try and walk you guys through the process I'm taking to optimize my PC a bit more and eke out as many frames as I possibly can in 2042. I should mention that I have a 1660 Super graphics card, so I'm certainly on the lower end of the spectrum here. In doing the things that I'm going to mention in this video, I'm hoping to at least be able to maintain 100 FPS or more in-game with my graphics settings on all low. Before we jump into everything, if you guys find this video helpful, then please take a moment to press like for me and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to hear me drone on about Battlefield even more at a later date. Okay, so as I mentioned in my last video, config files are indeed working in 2042 now, and we can leverage them to help make our games run a bit more smoothly on our systems. I wanted to mention that first, since that's the primary reason I'm looking into all of this to begin with. I also have to thank several people for bringing the things I'll talk about in this video to my attention. Their efforts and taking time to provide their own solutions are what make this possible. Those people are Heeb, for being the first person I saw tweet that configs are now working in the game, Aimbot Amy, Enders, and some of their friends for their efforts in testing and refining a functional config file, and Freethy for his latest video on optimizing 2042. I'll be sure to link these creators' posts and resources in the description below so that you guys can check them out personally. Okay, finally, let's get into it. The first step I took in the optimization journey is something everyone should be doing periodically anyway, and that's making sure your Windows install is as clean and optimized as it can be. Just be sure to remove temporary files, run a disk cleanup, make sure your drivers are up to date, and unwanted programs and applications aren't running in the background unnecessarily while you're trying to game. This will go a long way to make sure that you can transfer all power to the forward thrusters that are running Battlefield 2042. I had not done this in a while, so this is where I started. After you've got your PC cleaned up a bit, there are some settings you can change in NVIDIA Profile Inspector to get a few more frames out of the game. Just Google NVIDIA Profile Inspector to download the latest version from GitHub. I don't actually have access to these settings because I have a 1660 Super, but some of y'all with a 3060 or newer will. Check out the linked video to Freethy's video or the link to Amy's tweet for some more info on what settings to change specifically within the inspector. With the inspector stuff handled, we can jump into the config stuff now. So there are already a bunch of configs circulating around. Enders has one, Amy has one, and Freethy has one, as well as several others. For the purposes of today's video, I'm going to test the three I just mentioned specifically to see which one nets me the best frame rate. We'll be testing this in the portal mode AANJ7Z, or no names aim trainer. Keep in mind, frames are typically a little higher in this scenario since there isn't really any chaos happening. To load these configs, you will need to download the file, make sure it's named user.cfg, and then drop it into the folder where your exe file is for Battlefield 2042. Okay, I'm going to leave scripted land and we'll jump into more live recordings of the tests on these configs. First I'll start with no config and then we'll work through the others afterwards. Okay, let's get started here. First I'm gonna go into portal mode. I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna host an AANJ7Z. Confirm that. Random password so random people don't join and interrupt our process. And we're going to jump in here and see what kind of frames we're getting with no config. This is, this is without a config file. I did also clean my shader cache, so we may have some stutters and stuff when we first load in here as the shader cache repopulates. Okay, and we also need to get our frame rate counter in here. So we're going to go to performance overlay dot draw FPS, we're gonna set that to one and then close the console thing. You can't really see it, it's in the corner there though. Um, looks like I'm getting CPU frames about 92, GPU about 100 in this scenario. If you guys can see that, I don't know if you can. So we'll just kind of have a play and kind of see what it's sitting at as I start shooting and stuff. So it looks like it's hovering around 89 CPU 90 CPU, and then around 100 for GPU. So that's kind of where we're at with this. There's another thing I want to check. I don't remember if we can do this. For some reason, I'm in borderless, which is not great. Make sure this is on full screen. 
What I wanted to check though with these various configs is um, this setting here, future frame rendering. Um, we wanna make sure that you know we're using the setting that's appropriate for our, our setups and it can vary wildly depending on your PC. So we're, we're getting about 94 right now or whatever, about 100 on GPU zero, about 90 on CPU. So I wanna see what turning future frame rendering on does. We're gonna apply that and then I'm gonna see what happens. See if our values change any. Because some of these config files that we're gonna test here in a second do some changes with that uh, future frame rendering setting. So we wanna make sure it's appropriate. Looks like it didn't really change anything at all as we currently have things configured. So um, yeah, that looks about the same. So this is with this is with no config. So give me just one second and we'll reload and we'll try it with the first of our configs. I think we'll start with um, the one I was using, which was the original one that Hebe shared. Okay, so now I'm loaded back in. We have got the original config file that I got from Hebe on Twitter loaded in and this is kind of what we're looking at it looks like cpu is hanging out about 100 and gpu is about 104 so that sounds like about a five increase on the gpu zero number and then almost a 10 increase on cpu you're noticing the hit reg and stuff is kind of spotty and weird right now that's actually because they've put me in a portal server that is 181 ping for some reason, but that's what's going on there. We're really concerned about the frame rate numbers though, which look to be just a little bit better with this this first variation here. Um, this is gonna be with future frame rendering on because I didn't change that. So let's turn that off and see what happens. All right, so with it off, numbers are actually a little lower, just a little bit. About, you'd probably say about five FPS lower maybe with future frame rendering off on my system. So that's something to keep in mind as we move forward here. So that's kind of where this one sits. Okay, now we're back in. This time I have loaded up the config that Enders has got on his latest optimization video where he talks about it. And it looks like we're getting around the same, 100 on CPU, around 106 to 108 for GPU zero. So they're pretty similar in that regard. There's really only a few settings you can change in the config anyway that are gonna help your numbers. The The main one being that light tile path, whatever line, whatever that one is. That's the one that does about the most heavy lifting. This is with future frame rendering off. So let's turn that on and see what happens? Hmm, looks about the same, really. Might have actually hurt things a little bit with this current config. Yeah, it hurt GPU zero scores, and it looks like CPU is a little more wild and all over the place with this one. So if I was to run this one, I think we're gonna have to turn future frame rendering off. Probably about the best choice. Okay, now I've got Freethies config loaded in. And we've got future frame rendering on for it. And it looks like we're hanging around 93. Now I'm not really sure how this compares to the other tests because Freethy's got, Freethy's got his config file set up to display the FPS, first of all, in the opposite corner of what we had in the other tests. And it's also simplified it down to one single digit rather than all the others like we had in the previous tests. So, that sort of puts a wrench in my in my cons comparison plans because I'm not really sure where we're ending up as far as that goes. Um, another thing to note with Freethy's config, excuse me, um, is that it did crash the game the first time I tried to load into this. Um, I was able to get in this time. I'm not really sure what that was about, but this config maybe, I don't know, my computer didn't like it as much perhaps. I'm not really too sure. So it looks like this is a little lower than the others, but 
I don't know. You know, I don't, I'm not really sure <laughs> since we can't compare the numbers one to one. Let's try it. Let's see if we can turn future frame rendering off. Um, this config is actually set with an option in it to have future frame rendering on. So this might crash things. I don't know. We'll see. It looks like the frames do lower a little bit on average when I'm shooting and doing things. A little more all over the place. It certainly seems like future frame rendering with this config, especially with that number being how it is inside of it. Um, there's actually a setting that it's tied to future frame rendering. So, hmm. I almost want to say the gun feels better with this config, which doesn't really make sense, but it sort of does. All right, let's try the next one. Okay. Lastly, we have Amy's config file here. Gun's feeling pretty beamy. Um... Looks like we're back to our three numbers here, which are up in the right there. Looks like CPU's hanging out about 100, and GPU is, again, it's kind of hard to tell with the, that menu thing there. It's about 100 as well, which it's my understanding that you want those numbers to be fairly close to each other so that the game feels a little bit more consistent and smooth. I could be completely wrong on that, but I think they're supposed to be pretty similar, not super far apart. So this one definitely achieves that. All right, so we're around, yeah, around 100 for both, which is about all I was expecting, like I mentioned earlier in the video, for this uh, 1660. I wasn't expecting any massive gains from this config, and it really won't give you that, because there's really very few options we have control of that will allow us to just have massive boosts just by tweaking settings like this. This game is really dependent on what kind of computer you have and what kind of hardware you're rocking. This one feels pretty good though. Let's double check our future frame rendering stuff. I'm gonna turn that off with this one and see what happens. I can already tell you it feels a little bit rougher, just like feel of the game. And you can also see that the, uh, the CPU number has dropped quite a bit with future frame rendering off. So it looks like future frame rendering might be an option that I need to run. Yeah, it definitely feels a lot better with future frame rendering on. It's just like, it feels a little less muddy. I don't know what kind of voodoo that is, but that's just kind of, that's just part of it, you know? <laughs> All right, so hopefully that audio was about as clear as mud. Um, I haven't done a lot of checking on OBS. I just overhauled it. But anyways, let's go back to scripted land and I'll wrap this video up. We'll kind of talk about the findings and go from there. All right. So that about sums up the tests. I'll put a table up here to compare and contrast all the results from the various configs. As you can see in the table for my machine, about the best I can muster is a five to 10 FPS boost using the various configs. The config Ender shared here on YouTube nets me the best frames with future frame rendering off and the config Amy shared on Twitter nets me the most frames with future frame rendering on. All in all though, they're pretty comparable and each one nets a small boost over running the game stock. Over the next few days, I'll just have to test and see which of these configs gives me the best feel playing in actual servers. I believe future frame rendering can cause some input lag, which heaven knows we don't need any more of in this game. So that might make Ender's config the one to use. However, I did enjoy the way the P90 felt when I had Amy's config running. I don't know. Practical applications and actual games will be the real judge of which is best for me. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to put together and test things. If you have any questions, I can try to answer them in the comments to the best of my ability. Are you guys currently using a config? Will you give it a shot after seeing this? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Best of luck out there on the battlefield.